So we are back with books. That makes me happy. <laughs> Um, I haven't done one of these. The one that I'm about to do, I haven't done one of these in a while. I am doing a book recommendation. Um, and I'm recommending holiday romances. So if you've seen like some of the book videos that I've had, even since like November, I've been trying to get into holiday romances during the holiday time. And that all started because I started reading like thrillers during October. So I'm trying and I like it. So I have, I have four that I'm recommending. I've read all of these and then I do have another holiday um, book. I haven't read that one yet, but that would make a total of five holiday romances. And you know what? Some of them are like reading a Hallmark movie and I love that. I mean, Hallmark during the holiday time is supreme homework. So we're gonna get through this um, in no particular order, but let's let's get started with the holiday mix up. And this is by Jenny, I think maybe Baird. Um, love, love, love this one. This is so cute. And it actually like the beginning at least kind of reminded me of this movie. Um, it's called The Other Zoe. It has a similar vibe to the start and as well as the other Zoe is also like during the holiday time, but this has a different little twist. So that's kind of if you've seen the other Zoe and you like that, then you would probably like this book. It's the perfect family Christmas with lights, holly and mistletoe, but she's dreaming of kissing the wrong brother. Lonely hearted waitress Katie Smith has a huge holiday crush on her gorgeous diner patron Juan Martinez. So when Juan asks Katie to pose as his girlfriend for Christmas dinner at his family's winery, Katie leaps at the chance. That is until an accident lands Juan in a coma right after giving his folks the news. Now Katie's in a jam and Juan has sworn her to secrecy about their fake dating deal. And she can't betray an injured man. And then there's Juan's brother, Mato, whose smile tugs at her heart strings just right while well, perfect Juan might not be everything he seems. When her family embraces her warmly, Katie can't help but dreaming of being in Mato's arms instead of only pretending with Juan. Second son, Mato Martinez loves his brother, but Juan's plan to gentrify Los, sorry if I say this wrong, Celos Cellars has cost their family too much. Katie is a warm light in this difficult time, but she cannot commit to Juan even when Mato starts to wish her gentle heart were his instead. With the winery at stake, secrets on all sides, and Juan due to wake up at any day, can Katie and Mato finally fix this holiday mix-up and follow their hearts to a real Christmas miracle? Okay, so Katie works at this diner, and Juan comes in all the time, and right before the holidays, he's like, I heard, you know, you said you didn't have anything to do. Would you be willing to be my fake girlfriend? He's trying to stop one of his aunties from pairing him with girls. So she jumps at the idea because she has a crush on him. But as they like solidified what they're doing, he leaves the diner, forgets his wallet. And as she's trying to chase him down, he gets hit by a van, which leads him to be in the coma in the hospital. And honestly, with all of that going on, by the time his family gets to the hospital, everyone has assumed that Katie is the girlfriend. Like, and he also breaks the news to his family, literally like right before all of this happens. Um, so she's just going with the flow because now it's been kind of like a traumatic situation. Their, um, you know, son, nephew, all of that is in the hospital. So she's going along with this ruse and Juan is in a coma for a hot minute, y'all, just in the hospital. And the family is still including her in like all these holiday um, traditions and things at the winery because she's the girlfriend. So now Katie is 
in a predicament where she has to keep the ruse going and she can't really talk to Juan about what to say or how to act because he's in a coma. So Mato kind of feels like things are a little iffy, like Katie came out the blue, Juan just mentioned her, so he's very suspect of Katie. And as he's trying to get to know her, he kind of sees a side of Katie that he likes and kind of pictures himself with her but then at the back of his mind it's like one his brother's in the hospital and two it's his brother's girlfriend so that's what we have right here it was very good it was a pretty quick read um absolutely absolutely loved it i think katie also kind of starts to discover some things about herself and i guess we'd say like her infatuation with juan um and things come to light and there's also some drama it's not just a little cutesy romance there is some drama going on with the family like Mato and Juan were at odds before Juan ended up in the hospital that's a whole thing in itself but this definitely gave me Hallmark movie vibes and I really enjoyed that so it's up there for me I I would read this again like every Christmas um, we had a total of 345 pages for this one. So, moving on. Next up, I'm going to do The Christmas Fix by Lucy Swore. This was another one that gave me Hallmark movie vibes. Again, we love to see it. Um, this is also a part of a series which I didn't know that at the time. Um, this is book two. It's the first one is um, Mr. Fixer Upper. It's basically a family that works in like construction and all that jazz. So the first one, I think, is the brother and then the second one focuses on the sister, which I honestly don't think it was too bad that I read it out of order. Um, I, I don't think it affected anything, so if you don't, it should be fine. She's going to save Christmas just to spite him. Single dad and town manager Noah Yates has always taken his responsibilities seriously. But when a late season hurricane turns Mary Connecticut into a disaster, he's left scrambling to pick up the pieces of the home he loves. That is, until renovation expert and reality TV star Catalina King shows up with a camera crew in a budget big enough to put his town back together. It seems like the perfect Christmas gift, but Noah isn't so sure. He doesn't want a celebrity diva capitalizing on their tragedy or filling his daughter's head with visions of glitz and glam. The last time Kat was in town, after all, she caused nothing but trouble. Kat is used to being underestimated, but Noah has an uncanny knack for getting under her skin. They can't be in the same room together without rubbing each other the wrong way except for that time in a dark alley where the rubbing was just right. Can these enemies work together to pull off a Christmas miracle or will their fighting leave them both on the naughty list? But also, you know what? We love a good single dad romance. Love to see it. So Noah's basically kind of like head honcho um, in this community. Everyone goes to him for things. And so when the hurricane happens, he feels like all the weight is on his shoulder to basically rebuild the whole town, make sure his people are okay. And it's like serious damage done. And um, Catalina, who has already been to this town before, she's already fixed a family's house, is familiar with the town. So she does want to go back and help them out of the goodness of her heart because like she knows these people. But Noah has this connotation of her from what he's seen on TV. So he's wary of her. He's already prejudged her. They just get off on the wrong foot. Girl, I forgot my words. Um, and she, I guess we say like, she doesn't really have, in my opinion, she didn't have preconceived notions of him. I think just because he rubbed her the wrong way. Like because of all his 
judgments towards her, she just automatically didn't like him. So they just couldn't get along. And Noah couldn't see that Catalina truly just wanted to help everyone. So, I mean, they work things out. And Catalina gets to stay. She gets to fix what she can. They're trying to get things together for Christmas. They're trying to get things together for New Year's because in this town, Christmas is a big deal. And they're trying to, like, it's usually a tourist attraction uh, for the holidays. So now, not only does Catalina have to prove herself, prove to everyone that she can do this, she also has like a time crunch of what she can do. And I think in this book, you, you'll fall in love, especially with Catalina. Uh, absolutely adored her because she's just, she stands up for herself. She doesn't take anything. She fights for what she wants. She's just a great female main character. Like, love that. And honestly, Noah, he has his moments. He does get better. It is better. Like, by the end, I did love him. But like, and at the start, it was like, eh. but at the same time, you can kind of see where he's coming from because he is trying to protect his daughter. And for those of y'all thinking it's like a little child, his daughter's like 12. 12 or 13 so his daughter in a way looks up to Catalina so now he's trying to mix those worlds as well but protect his daughter and protect the people of the town so it's like you can kind of see his side but at the same time Catalina's literally just doing this out of the goodness of her heart but also filming it for a show so tap into it. <laughs> tap into it. It's definitely a Hallmark movie and I'm looking forward to reading the first book that's about her brother. And like you do briefly meet the brother in this one. But again, I don't think it's to the point where it's going to spoil anything serious. Um, And then this book had a total of... 376 pages and then this I don't know if it's all copies but this also had like a bonus epilogue again don't know if it's all copies but this one had bonus content I love bonus content moving on we have wreck the halls by Tessa Bailey um love me some Tessa Bailey so this book was talked about a lot last year uh during christmas time so i decided to finally jump on the bandwagon and read this one um i'd say ranked in my tess bailey books this might be like four i've read like five tess bailey books so i think we're at like mm, three or four it happened one summer and um love her lose her love her or lose her or one and two this would be like a three or four okay just to kind of give a scale i think one thing that i didn't like is the main guy character he his name is beat b-e-a-t beat that's like the one thing i just did not like it was kind of an ick. Like, why is your name that? Why did your mother name you that? I didn't like that. But once you get over that, it's good. <laughs> um, Melody, Melody Gallard may be the daughter of music royalty, but her world is far from glamorous. She spends her days restoring old books and avoiding the limelight. One awkward tabloid photo was enough. Thanks. But when a producer offers her a lot of money to reunite her mother's band on live TV, Mel begins to wonder if it's time to rattle the cage, shake up her quiet life, and see him again. The only other person who could wrangle the rock and roll divas, Beat Dawkins, the lead singer's son, is Melody's opposite. The camera loves him, he could charm the pants off anyone, and his mom is not a potential cult leader. Still, they might have been best friends, if not for the legendary feud that broke up the band. When they met as teenagers, Mel felt an instant spark. 
but it's nothing compared to the wild intense attraction that builds as they embark on a madcap mission to convince their mothers to perform one last show. While dealing with the rock star shenanigans, a 24 hour film crew, brawling Santas and mobs of adoring fans, Mel starts to step out of her comfort zone. With Beat by her side, cheering her on, she's never felt so understood. But Christmas Eve is fast approaching and the decades old scandal is poised to wreck everything. The Steelbirds reunion, the relationship, and their mothers, and their newfound love. Also, another thing I didn't like, besides his name being Beat, was they have lack of communication in here. That's not to say it's not a good book. I just personally, sometimes lack of communication does it for me. Because I'm like, we're supposed to be adults. We should be able to have adult conversations. So why are we going 50 pages without talking to each other? That, that makes me mad. Cause I'm like, this all could have been cleared up very easily if we had this conversation, but we didn't. Anyway, okay, side note. But, um, so Melody and B kind of grew up together in a sense when their moms were in this band together. Um, and Melody had a crush on B, but like things never went that far. And so, both of them are reached out to this person. I think it's like Danielle reaches out to them and wants to do a reunion, a reunion performance as well as a show leading up to the performance of their moms. But for whatever unknown reason, they had a feud and both of their moms are mad at each other. So they're kind of like, this really isn't gonna work. I don't think they're gonna do this together, but they both have their own reasons on why they do need this to work, Melody and Beat. Beat more so than Melody because he has some other stuff going down. It's a whole lot. I did like that part of Beat having specific reasons of why he needed this like show and performance to work. But Melody has her own reasons, but at the same time, she's kind of going along because Beat agrees to do this first. So now Beat and Melody are put together again after some years and they've both kind of changed in different ways. And they're kind of in the situation where they have to face their mothers, not saying they had like terrible relationships with their moms, but their moms kind of went off the wire. Like I think at one point, one of their moms is like a nudist and the moms just, wild out and did some random things so it's like they have to go back to their mothers and convince them on why this reunion performance and the show needs to happen and while this is going on they both have to face their own personal issues which was pretty cool and honestly the twist of why the band broke up to begin with that was good stuff because i actually didn't see that coming. I mean, they do drop some hints, like as I thought back after I read the book, they drop some hints of what was going on that could have possibly caused this. I didn't pick up on a pick up on it the first time around, but it was it was some good stuff. I think it was a nice, cute little romance um, by Tessa. But again, I think this was like one of the first holiday romances I read as I was trying to get in to reading holiday romances during the holiday time but it was good but it was like the the dip my toe in the water to test things out um and this one has 351 pages also a little fun fact about this that um so at the end of this book it gives you a sneak peek not a sneak peek, but like an announcement of a new Tessa Bailey series, Fan Girl Down. It's going to be a duology. And oddly enough, I um, received an arc from Goodreads of Fan Girl Down uh, like last week. So that's exciting. Hold on. I'm going to show you. This is the arc of Fangirl Down. 
I'm so excited. This is probably going to be like one of my next reads and it doesn't come out until February. February 24th, as said on the spine, as y'all can, if y'all can see, but it's going to be a duology and I love it. He's a um, professional golfer and she's a certified fangirl. But again, I love Tessa Bailey, so I'll probably love this one. Just wanted to share that because I thought that was like crazy timing wise. And like, I didn't even know the amount of Goodreads giveaways I actually enter and don't win. So I took this as a win. <laughs> now we're, we're gonna end with the um, last holiday romance book. A Merry Little Meet Cute by C.R. Simone and Julie Murphy. This one was also very cute. I enjoyed it. And this was another book that was very hyped up during the holiday time last year. So finally jumped on the bandwagon to read this one. And because I enjoyed this one, I do plan to read the other book. It's called A Holly Jolly Ever After. They both did this one as well. Um, I don't know much about that one. It's Holly Jolly, I'm assuming a holiday romance. Um, I don't know if I'm going to read that this year, but I do plan to read that because I enjoyed this one. Um, in some like senses, it reminded me of a Hallmark movie. Um, and then I think it also nudges to uh, using Hallmark. Like there's the Hope channel. I connected that with Hallmark channel. It all makes sense when I read the back and explain that. B. Hobbs, aka Bianca Von Honey, has a successful career as a plus size adult film star. With a huge following and two supportive moms, she couldn't ask for more. But when her favorite producer casts her as a star in a Christmas movie he's making for the squeaky clean Hope Channel, B's career is about to take a more family friendly direction. Forced to keep her work as Bianca under wraps, B quickly learns that this is a task a lot easier said than done. Though it all becomes worthwhile when she discovers her co-star is none other than childhood crush Nolan Shaw, an ex-boy band member in a desperate need of career rehab. Nolan's promised his bulldog manager to keep it zipped up on set and he will if it means he'll be able to provide a more stable living situation for his sister and mom. But things heat up quickly in Christmas Notch, Vermont, when Nolan recognizes his new co-star from her closed doors account. Oh yeah, he's a member. Now B and Nolan are sneaking off for Quickie's onset and keeping their relationship a secret from the Hope Channel execs. Things only get trickier when the reporter who torpedoed Nolan's singing career comes snooping around and takes instant interest in mysterious newcomer B. And if B and Nolan can't keep their off-camera romance behind the scenes, then this merry little meet cute might end up on the cutting room floor. So Hope Channel, Hallmark movies, that's kind of what I connected it to. And then Closed Doors, I'm assuming that's kind of like an OnlyFans. That's what I'm getting at. So B works on this Closed Doors account. And the basically head producer who organizes performances for Closed Doors is also working on this new movie for the Hope Channel. And B is not the original like um, main actress for this. The main actress like backs out or something last minute and B randomly gets picked. So she's all gung ho. She's excited to finally take a new turn in her acting to do um like family friendly acting things like that and nolan is doing this because he's trying to take care of his sister and his mother and he needs this film to go well for family reasons so when he actually sees b and recognizes her he's kind of trying to keep things together because he doesn't want her to know that he is like a big fan of her closed doors but also B had a crush on Nolan when he was in his boy band. So it's like they both have 
senses that they know each other, but at the same time, they don't want the other person to know that. And while B is trying to work for the Hope Channel, since it is family friendly, her life as Bianca cannot be found out. But obviously, Nolan knows this. So they do have the moment where they share together and Nolan actually sl slips up and calls her Bianca. And that's when afterwards she's like, you know, I have to keep Bianca a secret. Like when I'm here, I'm B, I'm not Bianca. Like we can't do that. I, I need this to work, blase, blase, blase. And so then they kind of form a connection there. And while all this is going on, Nolan is still trying to deal with his sister and his mother, like, because he's the primary um, provider for them. So Nolan has his own family issues going on. And this one also has a little bit of lack of communication. I don't really like that, but it does. And I mean, the conversations end up being had, but like if you would have said something sooner, things would have worked out differently. And I will say, I think Nolan does a good job at trying to correct his mistakes. Like he doesn't sit on it. You know how sometimes they just try to sit on it and it, figure it out later or do something later. I will say Nolan is a man of action. Like he will recognize his mistake and then try to fix it. So I do really like that about him. And I think with B, she is also figuring herself out as she has B who is herself and then Bianca who works on closed doors. And I think her getting this role, the main role for Hope Channel, it gives her time to actually discover herself and who she wants to be moving forward there we have it yeah but this book i mean had some scenes that reminded me of this would be in a homework movie so i really really enjoyed that and i think this was super cute and i'm looking forward to reading like i said this holly jolly book it's after this one like i had a really good time reading this one it's good vibes. I read for the vibes to have a good time. I had a good time. That's we love to see it. Um, and this one had around la, 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 la. this one had 418 pages. So yeah, I think I'm getting into reading specific books during specific times and I do think I would like to continue reading holiday romances during the holiday time probably start in November and not just December um because it is like a comfort and like I said I do still have another holiday book that I want to read uh because that one also looks good it's a second chance romance with exes love to see it but yeah, I I hope y'all enjoyed these books. Like, I hope they sound interesting to you, especially because it is the holiday time. We still have time left in December. Honestly, you can stretch it out to January as well because it's the new year. But I definitely want to read more holiday books. I do understand why people <laughs> read them during the holiday time. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. So hopefully y'all enjoyed the video and possibly check out some of these books. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please hit the subscribe button down below. Peace and blessings, my loves.